my name is Theodore Zakaria. I am an E4 and I am with Charlie Company 1143rd Airborne. Had first formation sometime around 05. Once we had everything set up, we got onto the buses. I just love driving buses. Down to Quonset uh, Airfield. We got wheels up and uh, we did in flight rigging. So before, usually we would sit in a, a hangar and get all our gear on there, all of our chutes, and get JMPI'd in the hangar and have all our gear on us ready to jump. And then we would walk out to the aircraft ready to jump. This time we took everything with us on the plane and we had, I don't know, maybe like 10 or more jump masters on there. So while we were flying in the aircraft, while it was moving, they were able to get all of our gear on us, inspect it, and get us ready to jump. The in-flight rig uh, is definitely proof of concept that our airborne company can deploy anywhere uh, very quickly with a short amount of notice. Honestly, like when we were getting rigged up, it was obviously a little bit uncomfortable, very crammed in the aircraft, but as soon as I got to that door, It was just, you're in sunny Florida, you know, we just got back from Rhode Island, it was all, it was snowing and there it was like right at sunset. Once you exit the aircraft uh, in an airborne operation, uh, you have about six seconds um, before your main chute deploys. Once your parachute deploys, you look up, everything's fine, it's just silent and peaceful. Had a great landing. Could, I, Honestly, couldn't have asked for a better landing. Jump went very smoothly. I think some people had like rougher landings, but I, I don't know like actual injuries. Oh. No. Once we did that, we hit a decent length ruck um, all the way to our area of operation. Did about an eight mile ruck to the live fire shoot house. Uh, once we got to our destination, we bedded down for the night because we had an early morning. I think we got to bed, I want to say around maybe 11 or 12. Yeah, it was a little cold out there. Uh, the weather hovered around the 40s. Because it got very, very wet and very, very windy. Um, you just have to go through the suck and move on from there. It's just one of the things we do. Second day there, we worked with blank rounds in the shoot house. This weekend, going into the shoot house, it was a lot bigger than anything I've experienced before. There was long hallways, plenty of rooms. I think we, we ended up clearing, I think five rooms in total was the most. Moving through those rooms is something that as an infantryman, you need to know how to do and, uh, well and safely. So when you're, when you're going through with blank rounds, it's, it's not too bad because I mean, they're, they're not real rounds, you know, but once, once we started using live rounds, obviously there was uh, more of a safety concern. The craziest rush is definitely operating at night um, and with live, because that's where there's the most room uh, for failure. Before the Army, I've never used night vision goggles, and it's, it's not as easy to use as you'd expect. It's really just like this little tube, as if like you're looking through like a paper towel. It's, it's just everything's green, and you're, you don't really have much peripheral vision, so you really just have to be very conscious of, of what's around you and everything. It's really, really tight inside of the shoot houses. You have to be able to move safely and effectively. It needs to be very, very perfect. There, there's, there's no room for error. But as long as you trust your teammates, you know what you're doing, everything, everyone comes out safe. For the blank iterations and the night iterations, we ended up staying up until around midnight. Uh, blank iterations ended up about 11.30 and live iterations ended about midnight. So the sleep was very limited. But that's one thing, as an infantryman, you have to um, understand that you need to uh, function on these low, low level levels of sleep. Next morning, woke up early again, probably same time, around 05, 06. Um, the machine gunners, which is what I am, we headed over to our range, our machine gun range. Then we rolled into some machine gun drills, and we would start at the base of a hill, charge up, lay down our tripod, mount the 240 on the tripod all of this as quickly as we can. We practice um, suppressive fire, brazen fire, plunging fire. 
over different distances, different targets at different distances. We also practice rolling guns, which is another uh, method of engagement we use to employ machine guns uh, to support our maneuver elements. We also did a little bit of um, unconventional positions like hip firing the 240 or shoulder firing it, which is something that we don't usually do, but if we had to, it's good to know how to and, and what to expect. As the night came on, we threw on our nods and conducted some night fires. After that, we, uh, we broke down, went back to the shoe house where the rest of the company was, and um, just got ready for the next morning because we, we were heading out pretty early again. This morning, we woke up really early, probably about 0445, and got all our gear on the buses, headed back to the airfield, loaded the C-130, all our gear, uh, and flew back to Quonset. Overall, it was, it was a great drill weekend. Honestly, like from start to finish, it was great. We started off with the jump, which is always a really exhilarating experience. I mean, everyone's nervous, no matter if it's your first jump or your hundredth. Um, definitely got really good quality training on that. Definitely became more proficient in using the machine gun uh, and more confident in my own skills. Yeah, so I actually, I'm, I'm from uh, a town called Phillipsburg, New Jersey. So once we finish up cleaning our weapons and everything, once we get released, I actually have to make a four and a half, five hour trip home. And I got uh, school tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. I know a bunch of guys from the unit that are from Jersey, a couple guys from Texas, Florida. People come from all over the country to to be in this unit. Tomorrow, um, after I drove home, home to New Jersey, I'll wake up to start work. So after I leave here, probably gonna be later on, hopefully around six, gonna be able to get home, shower, because we all, none of us have showered in what, three or four days here. Gonna have to wake up early tomorrow, probably around seven to get to work for nine. Um, after that, I actually have class after work, so tomorrow's gonna be a full day. And that is essentially your typical uh, four day drill and um, just gotta wake up now for work in the morning at six.